So that the freeze recently had an altercation with very dark man where he said real estate in Nigeria is a bad investment, we should buy watches instead. Property for Niger no be asset to they don't demolish Lagos own finish. He remain Abuja own one day buy watch from my livelihood with diamond. Now asset if you sell them for any country in the world, not buy property. But do you know the truth? That the freeze is right. Real estate in Nigeria is a bad investment. A property you bought two years ago at 40 million naira. Today, it is now maybe 70, 80 million naira. It has doubled. That sounds good, right? But if you compare it to the value of the naira and the dollar, probably when it was bought, it was bought at 450. And today, it's 1,000 plus, right? You see that you have either lost money or you are at the same level, basically. Whereas if you are taking that your currency and put it in another investment or borrow real estate in another economy, you would have gotten you know, better returns. I have so many clients, even relations who you know who call me every day and like, um, I regret buying this property, I regret doing this and that, right? And many people will say, do not base uh, Nigerian real estate according to the dollar. See, let us be honest with ourselves. Most of the people buying these properties are Nigerians in diaspora or Nigerians in Nigeria who earn foreign currency. So those people now converting their money to Naira and then everything starts to flow to it. You see that it is, it is a bad investment. But the problem here is that not everybody is buying real estate as an investment. Stay with me. Let me share my own story with you, right? My Igbo language is very bad, right? I hear, but it's difficult for me to speak. And this little that I can do was me being intentional when I became an adult. Like, I couldn't hear, I couldn't speak anything, right? But as I grew older, especially because I went to Futo in Oweri, so I, I, I knew how important it was to learn my language. So I started to put in effort to learn it. And the reason I cannot speak the language is because of my mother, right? My mother cut us off from our family from when we were two, right? She cut us off. So we were kind of like enclosed. We were in Lagos for a very long time in a middle income area. Everybody speaks English or at most Yoruba, right? So we wouldn't really blame us for it. However, before you judge my mother, let me give you a reason behind why she did what she did. Because growing up, I always thought that the reason why we were cut off from the village was, you know, because of evil, spirituality. You know, those of us from Nigeria understand what I'm saying, right? So that was what I always told my friends. But it was not when I, it was not until I became older and I now understood things from my mother's point of view. Now, my father didn't have a house and he still doesn't have a house in the village, right? So anytime we went to the village, we have to stay with my, you know, stay in my grandfather's house, a three bedroom bungalow, old bungalow with my father's other siblings, right? Because not all of them also had houses in the village. So we'd all be cramped up there, old house, old kitchen, you know, stuff like that. And my mother is a babe, right? Like she's, she came from a world to do family. So she didn't like all that. So what now started to happen was when we went, we would stay maybe two or three days in my father's village, then spend like two, two weeks to a month in her village. You know, probably we'll go to the village on the 15th of, the, 15th of December. We'll go to my father's place, stay there till about 18th, then go to my mother's place, stay till January. And this had to cause some issue with my parents, right? Because on my, on, on my father's part, I'm sure they didn't have, he wouldn't have had an issue with it. My father's an easy going man. You know how these things are. Maybe your friends will say this. Why will your wife keep your children away from you? That kind of thing. So they began, they began to have issues, right? My mother said she cannot stay there. She didn't want to squat with anybody because it was either we stayed in my grandfather's house or go and stay with one uncle or the other. So my mother said she didn't like squatting. And since she was not comfortable with him, with her taking us to her own village, then we would rather not travel, right? So that was how we stayed away from the village. So for about 10, 15 years of our lives, we didn't touch the village. I think the last time we went was when, when, we were, when I was two. And then the next time was when I was like 16, 17, during my father's mother's burial. And then I got admission to university and then started to bridge the gap myself. Now, building a house in my village has always been my dream, right? And when I'm ready for it, I don't care how much it costs, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, I am going to build a house in my village. It makes no economic sense. It makes no financial sense. It is a useless investment, but it means something to me. So I don't care what I could have used or what I would have been able to use that money to do. It is my own ambition to build a house in the village. And that is what real estate is with a lot of people. See, like I said, most of the people that buy these properties are 
diaspora Nigerians, right? Many of them, things were not going well for them here. You know, that's why they had to jack back. A couple of them, they were doing well here, but they had to sell stuff and leave. But deep down, there is this burden, like, buying a property in Nigeria is a symbol of success, right? I went, I left Nigeria as nobody. I came into this country, America, Canada, Europe, and I've made something of myself. So this house is a symbol of my hard work, of the sacrifices I have paid. So they don't care. But if they bought it 100 million naira today, it is 10 million naira, it, they don't give a damn. Right? And you should try and understand that there are so many people like this. A lot of the buyers, this is how they think. So do not try to discourage them. Do not try to make them feel bad. Right? And if you're one of them, do not listen. Do not bother about all these people. Your reasons are valid. So what the village house represents to me is what a house in Nigeria represents to so many Nigerians in diaspora who are changing their dollars to naira. They are not more intelligent than many of them. They know that they are losing money. But it, is, it means something greater to them. They just want to have a very nice place. Anytime, even if it's once a day, or be once a year they come to Nigeria, they have this place to stay. They can keep their parents there. They can just lock it up. But it has satisfied something with them. So a lot of people are emotional buyers. They are not rational or logical thinkers. Now, does it mean that those with the investor's mindset cannot make money in Lagos real estate? False. But the problem is that these people do not know how to play in the Lagos or in the Nigerian real estate market. Listen, you have to take risks to make money. If you're thinking as an investor, you have to take the risks of an investor. And currently, the best way to make money in Nigerian real estate is to become a developer. Pump and plane, I said it. If you're not thinking like a developer, if you're not um, investing as a developer, you're, you're wasting your time, right? Then you just rather be like the other people who just buy it you know, to satisfy their own inner cravings. But if you really want to make money in Lagos real estate, you have to become a developer. Who is a developer? If you want to take it technically, a developer is somebody who finances a real estate project, right? Or who carries out a real estate project. But to me, I'm, I, I, I define it as somebody who creates value in real estate, right? And it can be as simple as just putting fence around the piece of land. Anything you do to improve the value of a property, you're a developer. I mean, that's what so many of them are doing in Ekwe, Ibejuleki. They just go there, meet family, buy a piece of land, put fence around it, ex estate. They've created an estate. They become developers and they're buying Jiwago, right? That's a lot of money to be made. So if you know that you're somebody who can take the risks, know how to create value in real estate, you're a developer. Come here and make money. You make a killing, right? You see a fallow land, you know, a, a, a swamp land in the middle of nowhere, but you've already imagined it to be a city like this estate we did in Ikota when we came here it was swamp that was it was a mess right we sand filled it we did the roads we put the light we put everything and then because of the uh, realities of the Nigerian economy it doesn't really make sense keeping funds in Nigeria for a very long time right so the best way to invest in Nigeria is you know short term two years three years you put it out you take it you know you put it in you take it out you put it in you take it out this is the truth nobody will tell you this <laughs> Nobody will tell you this. this is the truth. And this is even more than real estate, right? Any business in Nigeria currently, because of our unstable it is, I wouldn't advise anybody to do any long-term investment. No, short-term, two years, three years, put your money in, make a profit to pull it out. Monitor again, go back in, pull it out until things stabilize. Now, not everybody has the ambition, the vision, and the finance to become a full-blown developer. The next best thing is to find a developer to partner with, right? And this comes in various forms. Let me, let me let you know another secret, eh? Do you know most of these estates that you're buying, I won't mention any name, right? Those of you buying into it, you are the secondary buyers. Let me tell you something, eh? I've, I, I'll create a video on how we raise financing in real estate. That should be the next video after this. But let me let you know the secret. Most developers that build estates, they don't have the full funds to do those projects. So do you know what they do? They go and meet investors, put their funds together, and then build that project, right? Maybe the investors own a couple of units or whatever um, structure they create. And then they now resell it to other people. So let me give you a very good example, practical example. So they did a BOQ and each apartment cost 60 million naira, right, to build. So these investors come in, maybe buy one or two units or however structure they create. Give it to this developer and this developer now resells it to the general public. Maybe 80, 90, 100, 120 million, however, right? and then shares the profits with these initial investors. 
So those of you who have this money, but you are waiting for everything to be fully built, you will now come in and be looking for a good deal. You cannot because on that property you're looking at, you have the developer's profit on top of it, the investor's profit on top of it, inflation and what have you, construction costs increase, whatever, right? So you cannot necessarily be talking about making a profit. So if you want to do real estate as an investor, you have to think like an investor. Look for a developer, partner with, put money together, give them money, let them construct, give them money, let them buy land. Do you understand me? And then they resell it to the general public and you make your money back. I know the next question somebody might ask me because somebody has asked me this question is, okay, if you put this money, how are you sure you're going to sell it? Bro, there is a housing deficit in this country, right? About 20 something million. I currently build under 10,000 homes in a year. China does 3 million every year. So there is demand, like whatever you build, no matter how long it takes you to sell it, you resell it. That is one guarantee I can give you, right? There is a housing deficit. We don't have enough people building. That's why we need more developers. We need more people to bring in funds so that people can have... Because listen, like I told you, it's some, a, a certain set of buyers, those people that don't buy to satisfy their inner need, right? Or even if it's not for, you know, for, 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 for that need, just for a home for them to stay, they want to buy a home. So there are a lot of demand. The supply is low. So we need more people to bring in funds so that we carry out projects, we build more houses, people will buy it. So if you are an investor type person, this is how you should be thinking. An alternative to this, right? So even if maybe you don't know any developer or you have trust issues, another way to go about this is to buy off plan. Let me give you a practical example. I love giving practical examples. Our project in Ikota is currently selling off plan. Let's use the four bedroom semi detached, for example, right? It's in the market for 85 million naira. In the estate where it is, Four bedroom semi detached is currently today. If you go there, you their numbers are there, you can call them. Four bedroom uh, semi detached is currently going for 85 million naira, and that's what we are offering a property that will be ready in 2024, April of 2024. We are offering it at today, you know, so we are giving you um, tomorrow's value at today's price, right? Then you ask, why is it why, why will a developer do this? Well, guaranteed exit that's why we are doing it. Other developers have reasons why they do off-plan. Some of them don't have money to carry out the project, but for us, it's guaranteed exit. We have seen that over time, people have always been talking about payment plans, but we cannot give you payment plan on a property that is ready, ready. No, we, are, we want to exit, we want to get out of that project and go to a new one, right? So we cannot tie our funds down for six months, 18 months, however some people have, you know, uh, asked for. So if you want to take advantage of uh, such opportunities, go and look for off-plan. Now, if we are giving you that thing now at today's price, meaning that by April 2024, the value of that house has gone up. Even if it's worst case scenario, maybe it is 95 million, you've made 10 million in six months, you can resell it then, right? Take your money out, look for another developer or look for another opportunity, you put it in, you take it out. People will definitely buy, I've already explained it to you that there's a housing deficit, right? So this is the way, these are the techniques. So off plan, partner with a developer or you become a developer. If you're not ready to do this, please shush it, stop disturbing those who are doing things for themselves and their future, right? If you're not ready to take the risks, Nigeria is this, developers are... Short shit, just keep your opinions to yourself, right? I've given you the ways you can make money in Lagos real estate. Now, you have to be careful of the risks. Everything I've said is risky. To be a developer yourself is risky. It is a tedious job, I wouldn't lie to you. To partner with a developer is risky, right? To buy or plan is risky. You have to weigh your options. That's why you, can't, you, you cannot call yourself an investor without taking risks. You cannot call yourself an investor with fear, right? You have to go in and do the work. That's why you're an investor. <laughs> do you understand me? So, look for properties because it's not every property you buy in every location. There are some properties that move in some certain locations, right? For example, if you go and build a, four be a five bedroom, fully detached duplex mansion, as they like to say, in Ochidru, for example, if it's not in either Ocean Bay or Buena Vista or something, you can't build in the middle of nowhere. Nobody will buy that house from you. Do you understand me? What moves in Ochid is terraces. Right, so you need to know what moves in some certain area because Orchid is for young upward mobile people, so they need smaller units of apartments or something easy that they can kill to. Right, so it's not just everything you build anywhere, so you need to work with developers that actually understand the terrain, that understand the market. Right, so you, able, you have a guaranteed exit. Yes, whatever you build anywhere, you will sell. Right, but for you to sell faster, you need to build what the market needs, what the demand is, so that you can exit faster. So, I hope um, this video was valuable to you. If you did, signify by hitting the like button, subscribing to this channel. I have a whole lot more comprehensive and detailed real estate topics I would like to dissect on this channel. So make sure you follow me across social media platforms. And if you want to see me more frequently, follow me on Instagram. Right? I update uh, more frequently on Instagram, on our projects, on you know myself and stuff like that. So you can follow me on Instagram 
at Bond North James. If you're interested, you can kin to some of our projects. We have uh, we currently have an off plan going on. We have fully built uh, duplexes going on. You can reach out to me or check the description box below. And uh, till next time, my name is Bond.